we are having a look at V-Ray 7 new features. This video is sponsored by Chaos. I have been using V-Ray since the beta version in Max 5, I think to remember. Since this first version, V-Ray evolved a lot from a very good renderer for Max to now a complete ecosystem that is now available for all other 3D applications as well. I have been using V-Ray first in architectural visualization, then in commercials for TV. I use it in operas, rock shows, interactive installations, mappings, and finally in visual effects for films. As you can see, V-Ray is used in a lot of different scenarios, has been always a very complete and versatile renderer. Let's see some of the new features on version 7. One of the stars of this new version is support for Gaussian splats. Just create a Gaussian splat and load your PLY Gaussian splat file. You can create one with an app like PostShot that is free or download an existing PLY online. Take in mind that not all PLY formats are valid. For example, in Sketchfab, you will find Gaussian splats that are PLY, but these ones will not work. You need a Gaussian PLY that you can find in websites like Polycam. That's where I download some for my testings using the 7 days free trial. When you open the Gaussian in V-Ray, you will see a basic point cloud on viewport with the option to control the scale of the splat. When you render the point cloud in V-Ray, it has automatically assigned a color and you can create any additional 3D geometry in 3ds Max that when you render will be occluded by the Gaussian splat it will be visible in the reflections and you have the option to cast shadows in your 3D objects. As you can see, it can be very interesting to very quickly enhance your scans, creating a well-integrated motion graphics for your presentations. It's possible to cast shadows from the Gaussian to the 3D object. However, the Gaussian so far cannot receive shadows from 3D objects, uh, but for that it's very easy, just convert your geometry on a matte shadow to receive shadows at render time. Gaussian splats can be very useful in a lot of scenarios, but I found that they can be extremely useful when dealing with plants and natural objects. On this forest example, if we used a LiDAR or extracted a mesh from photos, you have always the problem that in close-ups, you can see the nature of the polygonal mesh. But however, the Gaussian splats are not a meshes, we are dealing with a volumetric capture, and we can see the integration with the 3D object is way more natural and believable, keeping very nice details when the object is occluded. We can see how adding a reflection to our objects here, it reflects all the 3D environment on a very natural way, getting way more interesting reflections than in a HDRI, especially if your camera or 3D object is moving around. Also worth mentioning that you can use depth of field and motion blur and it will work just fine with Gaussian splats. I tried and yeah, just works as any other object. Chaos Cosmos is the library from Chaos with constant updates and with this new update it's no different with hundreds of new assets including vegetation, people, cars and furniture. It's as easy as drag and drop and you know that you have assets on the correct scale, it's all b proxies making your scenes very light and with all materials working perfectly fine with V-Ray. As you can see it's so easy to dress an empty room in no time. Another big update on V-Ray 7 are Luminaires, a new technology that allows to render light fixtures loading a pre-compute light field from an external file. You can find them on Chaos Cosmos, they are marked with Luminaire. For now the limitations are that you cannot create such files, so you just can load whatever Chaos Cosmos assets are created with these Luminaire files. The Luminaire Light it creates this involving light preview with controls to load the file, adjust the scale, intensity and color.
The big advantage is that these slides will not only render way faster, but as you can see, it can be different depending on the scenario. I get up to twice as fast, but also the render, the final render is way cleaner, as you can see on this comparison. And for all of you creating architectural visualizations with a lot of interior uh, rooms, these slides works amazing. I just uh, wish that we have more of them. So with Chaos Cosmos Gallery, importing a big quantity of assets is really, really simple, knowing that you will not have surprise on materials or scales, and then I can import all of that in Typeflow, even on the free version for Typeflow. And you can import directly B-Roy proxies from Chaos Cosmos Gallery as easy as that, you just load them, and each of these assets gets assigned the correct material without needing any type of preparation to load all of that. Typeflow was updated to support V-Ray 7 the first week that V-Ray 7 was available. With that, it's very easy to create an animation like that where we are flooding a room with all types of... I have over 100 assets here. For me, working on visual effects, it's very important that my most used tools are working really good together and Typeflow and V-Ray are the perfect combo. Doing this render, I saw that I had some fireflies on this lamb on the left. So I could test another new feature on v 7, Firefly Removal. It's a new algorithm that automatically removes bright pixels artifacts during rendering. As easy as one-click solution, you adjust the threshold and done. Really simple and a huge time saver. V-Ray has been improving the scatter tool since it was introduced, and adding a scatter preset from the Cosmos library is as easy as drag and drop any other asset. This creates a very even distribution, but now we have different images to be used as distribution presets to break the uniformity of the scattering for a more natural look. You can change your UVs to adjust this image scale, but I wish that there was some basic values to adjust scale, offsets or contrast of this image. Let's scatter some Joshua trees, also from the Cosmos library. If with an image you don't get the distribution that you are looking for and you need very specific adjustments, we have now the ability to edit this scatter. With a brush, we can paint instances over the surface exactly where you want. And you can also delete them. By default, only the ones that you are painting, but you can choose as well to delete instances created by the scatter itself. If you need to adjust a specific instance, you can also do it in this edit mode. You select, move, rotate or scale any instance, giving you total control over every single object. You can as well select multiple ones, moving them around, this makes it super flexible. And yeah, the scatter has been improving tremendously and is now a very robust tool for basic scatterings over your projects. Another improvement is that now we have Cosmos Assets variation. When hovering over Cosmos Assets image, you can see a number on the inferior part indicating how many variations exist for this model. For most trees, you have different seasons or use the same asset with a slightly different behavior. You can see on this palm tree where we can switch very easily between these variations from the V-Roy proxy itself with an image indicating a preview of, the, of what you are dealing with, simplifying the number of objects that you need to have on the scene. The V-Ray Sky, we had an updated system with more flexibility to go from daylight to sunsets with an updated PRG Sky model with values for altitude and turbidity. The V-Ray Frame Buffer received multiple improvements, we have a new polygonal regional system where instead of just uh, draw a square as you, can, as you can before, you can draw any shape to be rendered or multiple ones with the ability to adjust them, move them around or delete them. The vignette layer has been improved in functionality with visual guides to adjust the radius, fade, intensity and rotation. Multiple color correction presets has been added 
you can previsualize them in real time just hovering over them that's making it very easy to found the style that you are looking for and after you select one you can always fine tune it to your own interest we have support to the new material standard in 3ds max open pbr that was introduced in 3ds max 2025.3 and now it's a new default material giving more compatibility to move assets across different applications, including Adobe apps. V-Ray Lister is a very useful tool to manage multiple V-Ray objects in your scene. In top of lights and cameras that we had before, now we have a new geometry tab, where you can see all the V-Ray objects, including V-Ray proxies, V-Ray 4, the new V-Ray Gaussian splats and V-Ray decals. It's not only useful to visualize all the parameters all at once, but you can also change multiple values from these windows all in one go, and this makes it super powerful to be adjusting multiple lights or multiple of these objects, now all in one single place. We have a new V-Ray profiler that is great when you need to debug complex scenes. It creates a complete analysis of your renders and you can visualize what areas of the renderer are taking most of the time to be able to identify problems or to optimize your scene. But that's not all, there's much more. We have virtual tours using Chaos Cloud to create panoramic interactive tours with hotspots, faster scatter for heavy scene exports, a redesigned V-Ray scene converter, Caustics now working on the GPU and faster renders with the GPU and out of core textures. So if you have a GPU with not so many RAM, now you can render anything because it will offload whatever it's needed. Also extended USD support with compatibility with the newest improvements in 3ds Max USD. Overall, a lot of improvements scattered over all the different tools V-Ray has to offer that now they are a lot. And it's keep pushing V-Ray not only as an excellent renderer, but as well as a complete set of tools that push all what you can do in 3ds Max. Making your life easier in a lot of areas and being able to work just faster overall with all the set of different tools that we are having at our disposal. Let me know in the comments which one are your favorite, because I have a lot, I think maybe a scatter is my favorite one, but being able to work with Gaussian splats can be a very powerful one in the future. I hope that we can do some small edits on the Gaussian splat or maybe a better visualization on the viewport that right now it's very basic, but we have the basis for something way bigger in the future. And just remember that a lot of the scenes that I did for these videos with a lot of simulations are available as tutorials or as scenes to download or my patrons. So thanks a lot to all my patrons that helps me doing these videos and that we are having a lot of fun together learning new things every day. Thank you a lot guys and see you soon. Bye.